And just like that, we have a pre-show for you here at the Rants of Izzo on Spreely TV. It is Wednesday. Year of our Lord, 2024, the seventh month of the year, the 24th day. I'm Dominic Izzo. I'm your host. This is the pre-show for the Rants of Izzo. What that means is it's housekeeping. We get to do some housekeeping with you guys before we go live. For those who are watching on, like, uh, Spreely, Roku, for Roku, Spreely app, Spreely app for Roku, Fire Stick, um, Apple TV, you don't have a pre-show. If you're watching on other things, like if you're watching on TheRantsOfIzzo.com or Spreely TV on Channel One for the live show, you're not going to get the pre-show. Pre-show is just all about us connecting with you, warming up the chops, if you will, the pipes, and, um, uh, Going from there. We got the Burn Pit Podcast boys here today. It's Wednesday. Yeah. That means there's 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 gas in the tank. We know that. No. And I guess when you're on, it's fair to say this you don't don't adjust your dial because this is the Rants of Izzo show. It's not two fags, one cunt. So <laughs> So we should say on that one. All right. Uh, guys, would you do me a favor while we have a minute left? Can you plug the awesome show of the Burn Pit Podcast and all that good stuff? Of course. You can join us every Monday on Spreely TV at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 o'clock in the Pacific. Myself, Scott Benjamin Sieverts, and Matt with Cool Matty Wack. Uh, we're live every Monday at 4 o'clock. We break down news of the day. We break down, uh, you name it. We talk everything. Just like on Rants of Izzo, just not as... Uh, as humorous as Dominic can be. He's uh, got a great sense of humor, but we, we, we're we live every Monday. We have some great guests, but we talk, uh, we give an interesting perspective that no, I don't think anybody else gives. Nope. No, it's hardcore. And if you are, we're, we're, we have the phones open every show, so we're doing that. So if you're listening live, because the majority of our audience actually listens to podcasts, so it's like, man, if you're going to listen live, you're like, dude, the Burn Pit Boys are on, and normally I listen, this is 7 o'clock at night, April shown. Um, it's like, I got to listen now at noon and talk to these guys. We do have a chat if you want to get involved. You can talk to Kelly and Sarah and Bev and April Schoen and all the other awesome people. The chat is the Rants of Izzo Show chat over on Telegram. That's it. Go to uh, Spreely.com. Check out the entire list of shows that are there, the social media site. Go to RantsofIzzo.com and support the show by funding it, donate it. And don't forget to buy my book, Before the Badge, Everything You Need to Know Before You Become a Cop, available at wordsmatterpublishing.com, Amazon, and um, Barnes & Noble. And let's do a show. Prepare yourself. The opinions of the host and guests on the show are exclusively just that. Opinions. That means that they shouldn't be the cause of your state of being offended. Why does everybody get so butthurt? Okay, let's go. Ready, go! Sit down, shut up, and pay attention. Damn! This is the Rants of Izzo Show with your host, Dominic Izzo, from porn to politics. We touch every third rail we can find. You might want to put your headphones on so your mom can't hear this. It's been called the most entertaining 60 minutes on the internet, and it starts now. Let's do this. Good afternoon. This is the Rants of Izzo Show here on Spreely TV. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great fucking day. It's Wednesday, middle of the week. Hey, you only got a couple more days to survive, and God only knows what's going to happen over the weekend this week. We had a presidential uh, assassination attempt one week ago. Joe Biden drops out of the race uh, this Saturday. We're going to have the gay frogs and the aliens uh, on the White House lawn coming this Saturday. Uh, Scotty and Maddie from the Burn Pit Podcast sitting in today. Gents! Man, I, it's like, whenever you guys are on, I, I do my best. Like, I was actually proud of, of the show that um, that Matt and I did when Scott was busy behind the Dairy Queen dumpster on his day off. Uh, and we were talking about, like, the <laughs> like I actually pl- planned a little bit. We were talking about Militia, and um, it, I thought it was one of the best shows we ever did. And actually, on the downloads, it was one of the most highly downloaded show that the uh, episode of the show that I ever had. But today, I'm like, wow. dude, well, yeah, that's because it's fucking... 
the one beautiful thing, and I'm not sucking him off, but every time Matt's on, and Scott, you too, but Matt is just a is a rain man of proper practical knowledge, especially when it comes to this time. So it's just it's fucking awesome to have him on. Um, but Thank you. You know, you're welcome. Go fuck yourself. Uh, over the last <laughs> over the last couple of weeks, we've seen some shit I've never seen in my life. We have the last two weekends. You had a, pres- a presidential assassination attempt. I was really too young. I was six years old when uh, Reagan got shot. I don't. I remember seeing it on the cover of magazines and stuff. Clear, uh, you know. Uh, but we had a president shot. Um, Couple weeks, a couple weeks, a week, a week ago, week and a half ago, we had a uh, Secret Service uh, broad grilled on on just in front of Congress and just not concede. Typical broad wouldn't accept shit for shit. Finally steps down. Uh, you got Joe Biden uh, steps down from the race. It, have you either of you ever seen this much utter embarrassing national shit? For our country in your lifetimes. Well, there's been a presidential assassination. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't call that embarrassing. I mean, that's happened before throughout history, right? You had Reagan, you had McKinley, you had um, um, Kennedy, uh, Kennedy uh, Theodore Roosevelt. They tried to kill. Um, but, you know, so that's happened before. But I will say the Biden thing. Well, of course, it's embarrassing. But again, you know, that's what in my opinion this country deserves this country is a direct reflection of the political leaders and the uh theater that the political leaders put out because our country is no the political system uh in general is just like the wwf Mm. or like a soap opera except for its real life but it's it's all if i may quote you know the the i don't know who said this but it's all fake and gay basically it, it's it's a joke and but that's a direct reflection of the american people because they in mass they allow it to happen which means america is fake and gay so we're we're living in a time where the the culture has been completely demoralized um completely pussified and that's both sides of the aisle it's not one particular group or, or to the other and we deserve everything that happens for we the people putting up with everything that goes on with our political leaders that we elect or allow to be elected or allow the handlers to give us these politicians to choose from to elect so it, it is embarrassing dominic it is embarrassing, but quite frankly, this entire country is an embarrassment. Yeah, to answer your question, Dominic, uh, and I agree with everything Matt just said uh, there, by the way, but to answer your question, no, in my lifetime, I have never seen anything like this. Uh, you, even 2000, you look at uh, the Bush-Gore election, there w- was some time there where they had to recount votes and, and, yeah. and things like that, yeah. but the you know, really chatted. since 2016... Yeah, yes. yeah. So, since 2016, since really t- the summer of 2015, when Trump made his way down that es- ex- uh, escalator, the things changed <laughs> drastically in the political scene. You know, it, it, he's changed everything. So from 2016 and then 2020, I've never seen a, an election just stop in the middle of the night. They stopped counting votes, and then things weren't decided weeks later. There was runoffs in Georgia for Senate seats, and and now uh, today, I've never seen a sitting president just step aside stop his campaign uh and just stop running and people we call this uh, that and people call you conspiracy theories because everyone including yourself dominic has called this right everyone has said biden's not going to make it biden's not going to be the candidate and we got called conspiracy theorists just like back in 2020 when you know a large majority of majority of us were saying Oh, there's going to be vaccine mandates, and then you're going to need vaccine passports uh, and all all this other stuff. And people were like, "Oh, you're conspiracy theorists." And then it happened. And here again, it happened this time around when we were saying, "Hey, Biden, there's no way he's going to be the candidate. No way." In fact, I just showed Matt a, a timeline of different presidential debates. Never in our recent history here have we had a debate this early. The first debate was June 27th. 2024 this year between Trump and Biden. I think it was done so to highlight the cognitive decline of Joe Biden. I think the DNC or his handlers did that purposefully because going back, I'll just go back 
to 2016. Trump and Clinton, the first debate was September 26th. And then 2020, the first debate, Trump and Biden was September 29th. So here, the first debate between Trump and Biden was June 27th. That, and you can go further back. Carter Reagan was October 28th. Reagan Mondale, October 7th. Bush Sr. and Dukakis, September 25th. Bush Sr. and Clinton, October 11th. These are the first debates, by the way, in that election cycle. Clinton Dole, everybody remembers Bob Dole. Uh, October 6th, 1996. Bush Gore, October 3rd. Bush Kerry, September 30th. McCain Obama, September 26th. Obama and Romney, October 3rd. And now here you go, the first debates, June, before a convention even takes place, before the RNC, before the DNC. And now here we have the DNC coming around the corner, uh, August 19th. Oh. We'll see what happens there. Uh, who knows? But no, to answer your question, I've not seen anything like this in my lifetime. It's going to be a yeah. shit show here because we just had two, and it's Sagamon County's in Springfield, so it's like two and a half hours from Chicago. But you just had, and I did a, I did a 90 minute breakdown on our uh, a channel uh, of the shooting uh, of the, the Massey woman who was shot and killed by the cop, and it's available on Spreely.video. You could check it out there. Um, holy shit. But it's like, man, fu- how much of this shit. And I, I don't ever want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but how much of this shit is planned? And the reason I ask that is, I, 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 when I can't watch something mindless at the end of the night, you know, to unwind and whatever, like throw on Netflix and just try to get in, turn into an idiot for an hour, uh, I'll, I'll watch something of substance. And sadly, I listen to people who claim that that uh, House of Cards was a, a good series. And I went, all right, I'll fucking watch it. And dude, I got sucked into it didn't help that david fincher directed the first two um uh, episodes and he's my one of my favorite directors but if, if you've watched the series these are the most vile evil uh, manipulative narcissist sociopath people every character and they're all on the fucking democrat side so it's like uh, art imitating life and they're creating um problems to solve as the the, the president or uh, uh, whatever position for, so that their party's like, oh, look, we need to keep these people around. Like I, I claimed last night or the other day, I'm not going to watch the show anymore because I'm getting like fucking sick of it. But last night I watched an episode and I'm like, holy shit, they actually created a war uh, last night to so that the president would be out of this scandal that the newspaper exposed him in. And I'm like, dude, if they, expo- if they, if they really uh, create this shit, how much of this shit were they created? Like with Joe Biden, do, do, do they? Hey Joe, we're gonna bump the debate up early. Okay, yeah, and we're not gonna tell him behind the scenes that yeah we're setting you up so your cognitive decline is exposed, and then we're gonna wait till he does take a nap at four o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna release uh, uh, the press the information that he's resigning from the the, the race because you know he would never do that on his own. So now that it's out, you can't put toothpaste back in the tube. The, the whole party looks like shit, and then all the way to yeah, we're going to have a convention in Chicago. Hey, let's have a black woman shot for holding a fucking pot of water by a white cop who's been bounced around from six departments and has two DUIs. Let's fucking do that. How much of this shit could really fucking be planned? If everything else is planned, is it possible that all this nefarious conspiracy shit theory behind the scenes can be planned? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And, and I... I watched House of Cards, Dominic. It's I, I actually think it was a good uh, Netflix series. Oh, there, really, I got yeah. into I think almost the fifth season. But there is um, a episode on there that's kind of similar to what we're seeing today. Is Kevin Spacey's character was the vice president, mm-hmm. and the president steps down, and the delegates have to select their party's nominee at the convention. Yep, and they end up selecting. Kevin Spacey and then his wife, they end up doing some <laughs> backroom deals. His wife ends up becoming the VP candidate. But uh, yeah, the, the, uh, leading up to a, an election election cycle, there's always a quote unquote October surprise, whatever that may be or whatever that's going to be. But uh, a lot of these things are orchestrated. And I believe there was a Chicago mayor that said, never let a good crisis go, go to yeah, waste. You know, so even was? if something's not it's Rahm Emanuel, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And who is Rahm Emanuel? Yeah, what's his ethnicity, by the way? <laughs> Rahm Emanuel, for what? people who don't know, uh, uh, I think I think the word you were looking for would be Jew. Um, it was Barack he Obama. He was he, he was he served in the IDF as well, I believe. And he wasn't he Barack Obama's <laughs> chief of staff? Yes, he no. was. Yes, yeah, yeah. But I, you, you don't even need to really plan anything. You know, uh, 
Dominic, you're a former law enforcement officer. You know that you know things can happen, and, and anybody gets a hold of a, a body camera footage, uh, something like a George Floyd, where you know th- there's countless, uh, probably on a daily basis, there's countless um, instances where law enforcement violates people's rights or they make poor decisions while on duty. And if something gets caught on camera, all it takes is for somebody, a media personality or a big media company, the mainstream media, get a hold of something and then just shove it down our throats and, and ignite and stoke the flame of racism or stoke the flame of injustice. So the social justice warriors, your Black Lives Matter, your whoever can just hold on to it, push it, and then your race baiters like your Al Sharptons or your Jesse Jackson, and they, they get out there and they give their speeches, they organize, because they organize way better than the right does, mm-hmm. and, and they can make things, uh, they can make the climate even more intense here in the country. Yes, because as I said before multiple times, Dominic, the left has no problem using violence in the streets to get or obtain whatever they want to achieve their goals. The people on the right will never use violence, even if it means protecting and defending not only their lives and their property, but their constitutional rights. They'll never do it. They only want to worship and idolize a false idol, a golden calf, and vote for their savior. Some people will say, Matt, the people on the right are more civilized. They want to go things, go about things the correct way, and they don't want to go and burn their own communities and loot their own. Well, they don't have to do that, right? They just need to protect and defend. Defensive violence Mm -hmm. is different than offensive violence. Righteous indignation and righteous fury is the opposite of what BLM and Antifa were doing. I actually, oh, I actually want to talk about that for a second. That's a mindset um, because I was going to go down the path of Black Lives Matter statement, you know, condemning Kamala Harris and all this shit. We can get to that in a minute. But I do that stuff, right? Um, I, I talk about this. I'm the guy who actually condemns the out-of-control impulsive issues with the urban, young, fatherless black community. Uh, and you see in videos, and it's it's proof, right? We have it, we have it categorized and cataloged uh, if in time memorial in, in countless videos online where the the culture that that the black community is in, in I, what I said, will act in an impulse control to solve their conflict resolution with violence, sucker punches, kick you on the ground, stomp your head. Doesn't matter what your gender is. They are a savage breed of humans. They are subhuman. By the definition of racism, and I've said this publicly many times before, the definition of racism is you believe that your race is superior to another race. But when it comes down to Asian, uh, 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 Middle Eastern, Hispanic, white, I don't care what it is, you do not see another culture that happens to comprise of that race doing these actions. Therefore, I believe when it comes to all other races, yeah, the young, urban, fatherless, criminal, uneducated black male is inferior to most other races because they can't control themselves, period. They're, They're the most dangerous, violent people out there. Now, they could flip that switch, meaning... You and I are you and I are in a grocery store, and I don't know. You take the last, you know, ca- quart of moose tracks in the in the in the ice cream section, and I'm pissed. <laughs> My impulse control is going to be so pissed. I got an adrenaline dump. I wanted that, craved it all day. You've got it. We get there at the same time. Whatever it is, I I have like this this wall and this filter that starts to in in nanoseconds of real time play out the consequences of what happens if I club Scott over the head, take the ice cream, go on with my day because it's mine. I have that. That same type of of safety switch, we'll call it a safety switch, prevents me from acting out violently against my own uh, best interest. I've talked about this before too. I play traffic stop scenarios. What happens if I get pulled over by a cop who hates me, sees my shit online? They're like, oh, here's this fucking Izzo prick, and I'm going to wind up doing And will, will I go quietly? What happens when a cop pulls me over for an unlawful reason? And I know that I did use my turn signal or I wasn't speeding, and they do an illegal seizure, and, well, do what you tell everybody else to do to fight it in court. Well, am I going to allow this person to take me into handcuffs? Because I don't go, will I fight, right? So I play those scenarios in my head. And it gets violent. It does. It's like, shit, I know at the end of the scenario, 
I'm not alive. I've got 30 bullet holes in me because I took two or three of them out. And, and yeah, yeah, Matt, you're, you're nodding your head. That's where I'm going. I don't think that many people understand that when it comes to, uh, metaphorically speaking, pulling the trigger to cross that bridge to get to violence, that I don't think especially men today have that. So when you're talking about righteous violence to protect what's your own, I think other cultures, like I was talking about with the, with the urban black culture, they don't have that filter. Our filter, as civilized men, like Scotty said, prevents us from doing it. How do you get, well, with, with the training you guys do, do you guys ever talk to men and go, you got to be willing to cross that fucking lizard brain side of you and unleash fucking fury that you can't recover from? Because that's the number one thing that prevents right. people from doing it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with what you said, but like, it, it, it's situational, right? So if you're in the grocery store situation, it's one on one. Even with the police officer in situation you just uh, mentioned, it's you versus the cop. However, you do know that there's going to be 50, 60 other cops coming after you. So it's not a one on one situation. Now, if you take the Black Lives Matter riots, you had hundreds, if not thousands, of blacks and even white Antifa, the supporters of BLM, who were white in mass looting walmarts you know uh, looting targets burning down buildings destroying property killing people attacking people in mass. so you have that aspect where the blm had numbers they had huge numbers where were the huge numbers of so-called whites or conservatives or patriots during covid when they locked everything down or where were the huge number of whites and, and patriots and conservatives to protect from these BLM rioters. Where were they at? That's my point. They get together as a in a tribal sense. They have no problems using violence. The right don't want to. Why? Scotty said it. They're they're more refined. They're more of that Christian mindset where I'm gonna turn the other cheek and be a coward. Well, I'm fucking glad the founding fathers didn't turn the other cheek. I'm glad they used violence and they won. Of course, they pledged their lives for fortunes of sacred honor. They collected a bunch of people, including the richest among them, to fund and finance this movement to, to create that revolution so we can have a country. Now, what's today, conservatives, whatever, you know, patriots, doesn't matter what color you are, they refuse to do that. And I don't know why, and they're the Second Amendment supporters. They're the ones all about Second Amendment, self-defense. Only against a fucking home intruder or common street thug if it's one on one, but they'll never do it in mass against uh, uh, hundreds or thousands of BLM rioters. They'll never do it in mass against their own government when they illegally, unconstitutionally shut down your businesses and arrest you if you're uh, uh, you know out against curfew or whatever it was during COVID. They'll never do it. Mm. So you know it, it's all about the numbers, Dominic. To your to your to answer your question, they can't organize to get people to agree because, unfortunately, the the average white conservative Christian is a fucking pussy. Mm -hmm. That's why these blacks, these BLM, they're not pussies. If they were, they wouldn't be attacking people, looting buildings, burning down, attacking police. They're not pussies. And they had these other people, even politicians, enabling them, pushing them to do it. Yeah, get out in the streets. Where's the where's the Republicans doing that? Where are the political no, uh, figures on the right doing it? Get in the streets and protect your businesses. Get in the streets and protect your constitutional rights. Get in the streets and protect your own property from these Marxist BLM people. None. Zero. Zilch. The, con the conservative movement is the most pussified, faggotry, fucking cunts out there. That's all I got. Well, uh, to ad address here what you're saying, Dominic, is uh, the ability in a situation to evaluate and, and control your emotions uh, to understand, like, there's a weighing out the cost analysis of decision making. There's consequences to each decision that you make here. And in something like this, you have to ask yourself, is it really worth it to go fisticuffs with a guy over a, a can of Ben and Jerry's ice cream? Well, but in the situation, now this is, we've talked about this on previous podcasts and, and it's been more uh, highlighted recently with the, the popular science came out with a study in an article and, and it's, it's uncomfortable maybe for certain groups of people to acknowledge and recognize, but popular science came out with a study that, and it was based on IQ and race. 
And what they did was show different uh, ethnicities and races and where their IQs are at. And African-Americans have the, have the lowest IQ in the study. And what they also pointed out was people with low IQ have a very hard time communicating anger and com- communicating their emotions. And what ends up happening is they communicate it through violence. People are more prone to violence the lower their IQ is. So couple that with the FBI crime statistics that say, you know, 50% of the violent crimes are committed by 13% of the population, that 13% being African-Americans. So it all comes together here. You're, you're all seeing it. So wh- where you, you, Dominic, or myself, or Matt can look at a situation and go, yeah, this guy upset me, or this guy, you know, pushed a button here, but I'm not going to allow this to affect me long term. I'm not going to allow this to be in a situation where here now I am I'm charged with assault or I have a lawsuit against me or now I have to pay, you know, so, uh, something, you know, it, we we're able to do that. We have the intelligence level to be able to say, all right, this isn't worth it. But it, to, to now Matt's point here is when it comes to protecting your own property, protecting your family, protecting your loved ones, friends, whatever your rights, your freedom, right. Um, you had in, uh, I believe, 92 was the L.A. riots, and you saw yeah. uh, these Koreans, these South Koreans on top of uh, roof, rooftops. With, they were armed. Not whites. Koreans. Right, and they were protecting their businesses. This was like uh, the Rodney King L.A. Yep. riots, yep. And, and they were protect. They were armed, and they were protecting their businesses. So I, I don't believe personally there's anything wrong with that whatsoever. But to Matt's point, you did not see that in the 2020 riots. You did not see store owners outside. Now, here in Pittsburgh, wh- where I worked, we – did board up our windows because we didn't want any property damage, but nobody stood outside with firearms. Nobody stood outside with body armor. Nobody stood outside willing to we did. shoot any, but Matt's unit did. <laughs> yes. Matt has, he is uh he has a militia unit here called the iron city citizens response unit. And he was actually in the news cycle at that time locally because he did, he, he went and he protected local businesses that wanted to stay open. He protected local businesses against, uh, you know, violent looters and things like that. And so, uh, again, these situations here, when you're talking about impulse control, normally a higher IQ individual has the ability to assess a situation in real time and say, all right, you know, that's this isn't worth it. Whereas, you know, there's other groups of people that are lower IQ that don't have that ability because of their lower capacity to be able to control their emotions. And, that, and that's just what it is. So, yeah, that's my take on forgot, both of you. I, I what forgot you're saying here. this from last week. I was going to say this. Uh, Illinois law makes it illegal for any group of people uh, to organize as private militias without permission from the state. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's illegal that's, in itself. That's a direct violation of the Second Amendment. Yeah, whoever wrote that law literally broke the law. So there's – so they lived – That's, that's like an ultimate – that's where I'm at. And I'm not an extremist, all this shit, but – there's my point. I am. So this, well, that, that's what I'm, how do you, I'm, I'm looking to say this for like education purposes only. If the second amendment, and this was my, this was my battle with being a cop. I was hired to uphold the constitution and the constitution of the state of Illinois and to enforce the laws. Now, nowhere in my now, and this is where I got in the end of my career when I met um, Sheriff Richard Mack who is uh, the president of uh, the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. And he changed my views on things where I went, holy shit, traffic citations are unconstitutional, excessive fines. I'm like, holy shit, dude, because where is it in, you know, and and it goes back to the whole, are you traveling or driving and sovereign citizen shit? And I'm not educated enough to talk on that. But um, we started to look at like Chicago uh, uh, removed curfew violations. And this was like 20 years ago. They could no longer arrest teens for curfew violations because that was a violation of the Constitution. Because where in the, in the Constitution say you have to be a certain age and at a certain time? So I started looking at things like, well, wait a second. All right, <clears throat> if you can argue it all the way up to court that I stopped you for speeding and, uh, you know, it's excessive fines, violation of your amendment rights, all this shit, why are none of us going, wait a second, Second Amendment is my right to keep and bear arms. Why do I need a FOID card from Illinois, firearms owner's identification card? Why do I need that? 
You know, I'll, I'll give her credit. Jan Morgan was the first one I heard say this. The Second Amendment is not your license to own a firearm. It's your God-given right to. So if that's the case, then why is it that just because you can doesn't mean you should. No, it's just because you can means you should. Why are more people not on mass forming militias and telling the state, fuck you. This is our right. If you charge us, if you go to criminalize us for doing this, we are going to war with you. And the cops will have to back fucking down. I just, I don't understand. We saw that. What was the, um, the was that the Bundy Ranch? Why don't we have more Bundy yeah. Ranch situations? Yeah, uh, the main, there's three reasons. Number number one, there's, well, there's four reasons. There's no organization to do that. What I mean is there's nobody in a leadership position telling people to organize in groups like that. That's number one. You don't have any online podcaster influencers that have a, a ton of like a huge platform. Like you're, you know, like I said, Dan Bongino, Glenn Beck, Tucker Carlson, blah, blah, blah. You don't have any political figures telling you to do that. John F. Kennedy was the last president that actually publicly stated that he supported militias and that it was important to the country. Mm -hmm. Look what happened to him. Mm. Okay, so that's number two. Number, right, number you don't one. Have, you don't have a Dan Crenshaw coming out and saying, "Hey, you got to organize an arm and protect your freedoms and rights." Yeah. <laughs> and and the second reason is you don't get paid to do that. Cops get paid a pension, paycheck, and benefits. Local citizens must now invest their own money to buy all this gear, spend time on training, take the courses, all the different stuff, all, body armor, equipment, radios, comms, going on uh, uh, first aid kits, uh, stop the bleed, combat <laughs> lifesaver class. Right. You have to take your time and purchase all of these things. They don't want to do that. They'd rather purchase big screen TVs, a brand new car. They'd rather have more luxurious items, go on that vacation. And, uh, Another reason is um, they fear death and imprisonment. If the state says it's illegal, it doesn't matter. It's unconstitutional. I'm just going to listen to them because there's more of them than there are me because we can't fucking organize. Mm. So so in that aspect, they, they've been demoralized. And this is over seven, eight decades. Citizens have been demoralized and they don't want to enter into anything that is dangerous even your average mma fighter or boxer they'll go in the ring and fight one other guy for money you think they're going to fight their fucking tyrannical government for free fuck no fuck no well, a lot of what we get online the pushback and arguments we get some more clips where we're promoting like a militia unit or, or you know protecting your own rights by you know defending using the second amendment to defend yourself and against a, a tyrannical government what they'll say, and Matt, you can respond to this, yeah. is they'll say, well, the National Guard replaced the militia. Mm. That's what the point of the National Guard is. Well, the National Guard's the government. The militias weren't. They were separate entities. And as a matter of fact, it literally says in the Constitution, remember, I said it's 100 times before I'll say it again, there was no such thing as police departments. Mm -hmm. The militias, the local and county and state militias enforced the laws. However, there were very little laws. There weren't that many laws on them. You were more free back then. You really had to do something bad to have the law enforced, like, you know, murder, theft. Um, you don't have that anymore. So they morphed the state militias into the National Guard, and then the government was able to take them over. So in that aspect, you know, citizens, they've been demoralized into cowards. They don't want to enter into danger. They don't want to spend their money to defend their constitutional rights. And what was it replaced by, Dominic? It was replaced by, hey, I'm just going to pull a lever, cast a ballot. Yeah. What Matt's talking about here, too, is comfort kills. And that's uh, the bottom line here. Uh, that's the overarching theme, which is people are comfortable. The, the breads and circuses. You know, they're good as long as they have a roof over their head, the air conditioning and entertainment, and they have some money in their pocket. They'll allow their constitutional rights to be trampled on. But when we talk about Bundy Ranch and the militias, uh, in, I don't mind having this conversation a million times over. I think repetition is good. The left uses the, that strategy all the time where they repeat something. The media, the CIA run media, they repeat the same thing over and over and over again until it becomes the truth in people's heads when it's a clear lie. But what we're saying here is exactly the truth. And Matt will remember this, and Dominic, I'm sure you'll remember this too. In late 2019, early 2020, 
in the state of Virginia. The governor was a, uh, named Ralph Northam. Mm-hmm. All right, Governor Ralph Northam. He was proposing a assault weapons ban across the entire state. He was going to give a piece of legislation. It was going to be an executive order. He was going to sign it. Well, there was a um, a organized uh, meeting date where militias were all going to come down to the state's capital, Richmond, Virginia. They were going to meet there, and people were. You know, there was a, an energy in the air. People were asking online, is this going to be it? Is it going to be the shot heard around the world? It's going to be like Lexington and Concord. And what you had, and we've said this again, and we'll keep saying it again, hopefully the message gets out there eventually, is you had all these different county sheriffs that came forward and said, you know, we'll back these militia groups. And Matt went down there, by the way. Matt yeah, I was, was there. there. Matt yeah, was there. I was there. They had all these different county sheriffs that stepped forward. And they went to the town halls and they went to these different meetings and these city council meetings. They stood in front of these city councils. And I remember one uh, county sheriff specifically got up and said, look, I don't care if the governor signs that or not. I've told I've already told my deputies myself, we are not going to enforce that. And then that emboldened what that does when you have one or two sheriffs step forward, that emboldens. It's contagious. That, that yep. courage is contagious. And that, that you had more county sheriff stuff forward, more county sheriff stuff forward going, yeah, we're not going to enforce that. Sign that all you want to. Uh, I think it was all but one county. Yeah, they all came forward yeah. and said, yeah, we're not going to enforce that, Governor. You can sign that all you want to. And as soon as then you take away the arm of the executive branch there, then it's over. It's done because all that is is a piece of paper. Here, this yeah. piece of paper here. The only way that it's going to get enforced, you think Ralph Northam's going to show up and start enforcing door to door? Hey, give me your assault weapons. Give me the, he's not going to do shit. He's, he's counting on the police, the sheriffs, state police, local police, county police to do his bidding. Yeah, and and that's if these why county the, sheriffs, the terrorists, yeah, and these, yeah. ca- these county sheriffs yeah. that have the balls and the guts to say, no, we're not doing that because that's not constitutional. We took an oath to uphold the constitution we're not going to do that and, and and these militia groups that came down to virginia with the county and you matt was there he said i met him i met the i shook hands with a, a line of sheriffs mm-hmm. that were thanking us for being they there. were all in support yeah. of what these militia groups. these yep. militia groups were coming from everywhere across the united states yep. in solidarity to show support yeah but if they uh, were should they have this- stood with them you know they, they should have stood What's with that? them if, if they were in true solidarity okay. they should have stood with them right but uh, what what ended up happening was the governor, of course, pulled that legislation. It never went through. It never got signed. All because these citizens were willing to show have a show of force. Yep. And then the county sheriffs also with them said, yeah, we're not going to enforce that. So that's the way to go. Oh, shit, gents. I don't know what to fucking tell you. We we're- laid out the blueprint here. Hold on. Yeah. We've laid out the blueprint. The blueprint here is, one, you need a couple of... of Men that are willing to step up and take the reins and be leaders and say, you know, I'm going to lead this movement and I'm going to promote this American spirit, this American ide- uh, ideology that our founders had. And then you're going to need county sheriffs to get on board and say, yep, we got their back. That's what we're going to do. We support this movement. And we're, in fact, some of these county sheriffs could go, you know what? The uh, head of the Iron City Citizens Response Unit, Mal Kulik, I'm going to deputize him. He's going to be a deputy. County sheriffs are allowed to deputize anybody within their county. And also, in if you want to go back to revolutionary period, you had 56 men who were large plantation owners, aristocrats. I mean, huge fa- fa- farmland, huge property owners. They financed it. Thomas Jefferson and, and you know Thomas McKean of Delaware and, and uh, Thomas Lynch Jr. Uh, John Hancock. These guys were millionaires of their day. They 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 pull a trigger, but they financed everyone that did. They financed the entire movement. You don't have anybody today financing militia groups or even promoting the idea of that. That's the that problem. we know of. Yeah. That we know of. Well, there could be some guys the behind end, the scene, but yeah, that's look at look at the other end, like uh, George Soros, and he, he's financing his own little bullshit yes. militia. Oh, yes. yes, exactly. Yeah. The BL, yeah. BLM, Antifa, they all get financed by who knows who. We don't know of any. There could be, but you never. I mean, you never know. There's militia groups out there that if you had somebody that had a big financial backing, you could really start a movement, especially with somebody like Matt here that knows how uh, the Constitution can speak and and communicate things eloquently. And then you get some uh, county sheriffs on board. You could really start something here. There's the blueprint there. And we've talked about it again and again, and we will continue to talk about it again and again. We don't care. 
We'll keep bringing it up over and over again until something starts to register. And maybe there's a spark there that ignites and, and you know, or the alphabet should boys show up at my house. <laughs> that we can do. Lay it out that this is a, a good one here. We've, all, we've talked about, again, folks, this is for entertainment purposes only. We're just, you know, hypothetically speaking here. Uh, but, I, you know, Matt and I have talked and, and we recently, uh, Monday, we interviewed a, uh, kind of like a, she was a, I guess she's going to be a whistleblower. She yeah. said that, uh, James O'Keefe from uh, project Veritas, yep. her, they got, they communicated, but she was at the rally, uh, on July 13th, Saturday here in Butler PA. And she saw some things and she's willing to testify, but she was uncomfortable going to law enforcement. She yep. was uncomfortable going to local law enforcement. She didn't want to uh, do that. She felt, uh, uh, she didn't trust them. So here. Uh, Matt and I were talking, you know, Hey, what, what, what would you do, man? If, uh, let's say, let's say the fed showed up at your house or even, uh, you know, who knows, Let, let's say in F, FBI and you know, plain clothes, maybe they had their badge on their belt buckle and they were a college shirt khakis and they're just showing up at your house. What would you do? And then Matt of course gave his response to where he's at Washington County, which is the County uh, below Allegheny Butler's above us. But he, he said, I would, uh, call my local police department and say, there are men with firearms outside my house. <laughs> I would not open the door. I wouldn't answer. And I, he goes, you know, I use a ring doorbell in front of his house and uh, cameras and everything like that. And then he would say, I'm scared for my life. There's men with uh, uh, firearms outside my house. Yep. And then the response there for local law enforcement, they'd show up and uh, yeah. get the party started. Yeah. That's yeah. It. But if it, if it wasn't uh, possible to do that, then, you know, I throw on my gear and I get my stuff and I, I just go to work until, <laughs> until I'm done. I mean, what else can I do? So, uh, do you like every other man, not too many Matty Wax out there. Do you do like every other American? I does. would rather, I would rather die. I, I would rather, you know, die on my, uh, you know, feet or, uh, you know, what is it? Live on your knees and die on my feet or whatever. So I'm not going to live on my knees. I'd, I'd rather die fighting the enemy. That's, that's the way I see it. You don't want to be a soy. I'm not going to die. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to die on my couch eating chicken wings, watching sports ball. There you go. No, not you gotta, happening. You, you got to watch Pornhub. Um, all right, look, we had a really, we had a really successful time um, playing a, a, a game yesterday or last time you guys were on. Uh, it was a word yeah. association game, and I think we need to have another uh, a game today. So let's let's do this here. We're going to pull this up, and um, we're just kind of kind of like. Up. Uh, do association for possible vice president picks. And um, where is this at? Where do I have this? Uh, well, what we have here going for the Rants of Izzo show here on Spreely TV is um, here are your options for vice president. And I'm going to ask uh, Scott and uh, Maddie, um, faggot, cuck, or... Uh, Oh, well, we're not going to do the N-word on this one. Uh, faggot, cock, or cunt. We'll just say that one. Okay. So that will we'll be out here. So here are the front runners for Kamala Harris uh, VP sweepstakes. And uh, Mark Kelly, senator from Arizona. He's 60 years old. He's a former naval captain turned astronaut who's been uh, the junior United States senator uh, representative from Arizona since 2020. He defied the GOP's expectations of a red wave in the 2022 midterms. What he would bring is a popular Senate uh, senator from a crucial swing state, longtime Harris supporter, and uh, could counterbalance Senator J.D. Vance as a Marine veteran on Trump's ticket. Scott and Matt, is uh, Mark Kelly a uh, cuck, a fag, or a cunt, and why? Hmm. Has he? He's. A, it says he's an astronaut. Has he been to Uranus? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would say fag. Yes, I'm going to go with faggot on this one. I I've never liked that guy. He stinks. Uh, he, he was just yeah, NASA's corrupt too. He's he's a faggot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's continue on here. We're playing cunt, cuck, or fag uh, uh, here on the Ransom Visual Show. Um, I did one. How they skip from one? Look at this. They skip from one yeah, to three. Okay, number three. Roy Cooper, governor of North Carolina. He's sixty-seven years old. Previously served as North Carolina's attorney general and is about to be termed out, but has maintained popularity in his uh, state despite the recent trend towards Republicans in recent years. What he would bring to the table is he's shown an ability to achieve uh, long-sought reform in a state where Republicans control the legislature. Uh, and he could give Democrats a more confident um, 
Play cue the music, Johnny. Uh, confident, uh, competing in North Carolina is crucial for a battleground state. Uh, Scott and Matt, is he a cuck, a faggot, or a cunt, and why? Uh, do I have to use one of those three? Can I use another you, one? Yes, you can. What would you like to insert? I would like to use the word, this isn't said very often, but it's a good one. I'd like to use the word twat. Okay. Can I use that one? Good word. Explain. Twat. He's just, a twat is a, just a weak, that's in, in uh, my, um, I don't, it, it's used as a, a bad uh, adjective to describe a woman, but it's better off describing a uh, man because it's just a weak man. He's a twat. That's yeah. what I'd say. Okay. Yeah. What do you say, Matt? I don't even know the guy, but I hate him. You can so. use you can use uh, just because those three options are there. You can use retard, uh, twat. You can use whatever you want. So we have that. Let's continue here. We're continuing with uh, okay. our option. Oh, here number two, Sh- Joseph Sh- or Josh Josh Shapiro, governor of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, he's your governor. Ring the bell. Pen- Ring the bell. <laughs> Ring the bell. He's fifty-one years old. <laughs> popular governor. Of a potential swing state, defeated MAGA extremist Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania's 2022 gubernatorial race. What he would bring to the table is he would be the second Jewish vice presidential nominee. He has sh- Matt's already, yeah, he has already shown charm and uh, deafness in his interviews that could further extinguish Harris, or distinguish Harris's uh, ticket as a youthful and exuberant one. And he's a connection to crucial battleground states. So I guess our options here are Scott and Matt. Is he a uh, cuck, cunt, faggot, retard, twat, or Jew? Well, uh, what's the German word for circle? I, what is it? Oh, I forget. But, but anyway, let uh, let me just say he's a cuck. Uh, he's my mm. uh, he's actually my governor here. Uh, he's a total piece of shit, but all of them are. Um, but you know, I I don't even think he'll be nominated. But he, he's a total cuck. He did nothing during the shutdowns as any Democrat or Republican wouldn't do anyway. But. Um, yeah, he's uh, he, he was the attorney general, and he uh, is actually violated the Constitution like most people do, and he deserves to be in jail. And uh, I believe he's a traitor to his country because he does take APAC money, and APAC's a foreign agent. And if I was in charge of anything, I'd have him arrested for treason, tried, and then given the maximum penalty if convicted. What's the maximum penalty for treason? Death. Death. Mm. Uh, I heard he has a picture. I heard in his office... The governor's office in Harrisburg. He's got a picture of a pile of shoes in his office. <laughs> but uh, he, I would say, he, yeah, ring the bell. Yeah, ring the bell. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's the, in, it's the inappropriate uh, bell. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, how dare us, by the way? How dare us? Uh, I, I'm going to go oh, cunt. Man. He's a cunt. He's a, yeah. uh, he's a cunt. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you go. Let's continue on. Okay. Here. Gretchen Whitmer, number four, governor of Michigan, 52 years old, popular governor Ooh. named Big Gretch, who was reelected uh, to a second term by a healthy margin after she emerged as a Trump foil. She served five years as the Michigan in the Michigan House of Representatives and nine years as a Michigan in the Michigan Senate. What she would bring to the table is known for her folkiness and colorful language. Uh, her ticket w- would create a first. Major uh, party all-female ticket, emphasis on reproduction rights, uh, connection to crucial battleground state. Again, is this woman a uh, cuck, cunt, faggot, retard, twat? Uh, Yeah, Gretchen, well, I think we know what she would do. Um, She would be playing Erica on her way to the Jews' houses, but, you know, this is what it is. She, um, she, she's a, a cunt. Again, she uh, guilty of treason, guilty of, uh, of felonies, the deprivation of constitutional rights in her state during COVID. Um, she uh, she had violated the law. She's literally a criminal. Again, she should be arrested, tried for treason, and if found guilty, she should be given the maximum penalty. Yeah, she's a... I, I would use again. I don't even want to use... She's... A, I mean, I just use cunt. I use twat. She's a retarded twat. That's what I okay. would use. I mean, Very she's... Good. Very uh, good. Uh, and, and you know what? If you remember, too, during that time, the shutdowns, that state was brutal with the lockdowns. And yeah. uh, she even locked down the waters up there in Lake Michigan. She had the uh, Coast Guard out there on the lake. And her husband, the cuckold that he is, 
tried to take the boat out on the lake. Mm -hmm. The Coast Guard, you know, pulled him over and he was like, ah, hey, you know, I'm I'm Gretchen Whitmer's husband. And the Coast Guard was like, this is her rule. Can't be out here. He thought he was above uh, those laws and rules, just like Gavin Newsom did at the time when California was shut down. He was going to wineries and vineyards and having parties and all that stuff. French laundry. Yeah. For thee. Rules for thee, not for me. That's the, uh, you know, the power yeah. elites there. So she's a retarded twat. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, continue on with Tim Waltz. Waltz. Hmm. Wonder what that background is. Uh, governor, governor of Minnesota. He's 60 years old. He's a two-term governor and a former school teacher. He utilizes his time uh, at the, as the state's top official to advance a litany of progressive policies. Served decades in the, Ar- in the Ar- Army National Guard. What he would bring to the table is he could draw progressive voters back into the fold. He continues to help the Democrat ticket shore up support in the upper Midwest. Uh, his reliability to Americans uh, with the education background. Uh, Matt and Scott, is he a cuck, cunt, fag, retard? Uh, I forgot what the other one is at this point. It's Free Speech Network. That's all I know. Yeah, what is he? And I, I never even heard of this dude, to be honest with you. But um, I, I don't know. He's a he's a cuck. Okay. He's a he's he's a old. Do you know li- anything about him? Yeah, he's an old liver spotted hand faggot. Is what he yeah. is. And hand. Fa- he's uh. Well done. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Wow. <laughs> old liver spotted hand faggot. I was in a band called Old Liver Spotted Hand Faggot. Tribute to Ted Nugent. We only had two gigs. Very ironic. All right. Let's, uh, I think that's it. Those are your options right there. Um, okay. uh, yeah. What do you guys see? We, but yeah. honestly, though, hold on. Do we think she's actually going to be the nominee, the party's nominee? Is it now set in stone? Is it for sure? Because the, the convention's August 19th. The delegates, you know, they're going to declare that. I'm just like you saw at the RNC recently where I think it was Eric Trump or Don Jr. came forward for the state of Florida. And, you know, for the state of Florida, you know, the delegates, uh, you know, choose Donald J. Trump to be the nomination for the Republican Party. You know, the delegates are going to have to choose here again. Does she have the backing of all the delegates? I see. I mean, I trust Vegas over anything. She's a 90 percent favorite to be the uh, party's nominee here for the Democrat Party come the convention. But are we sure that something else more well, October surprise. What's the October here? surprise? And the the one thing that I was on my bike when I was listening to, I had I had the news on. I'm riding my bike, and it's like you had Joe Biden releases a statement, and then 28 minutes later he releases. Oh, by the way, I put my full weight in my office behind Kamala Harris, and then you get the division uh, amongst the ranks, like Obamas don't support her. It's they are so disheveled. It's insane. I don't see it happening. I'm I do not, and I, I said this on Monday. I don't like Hillary Clinton. I don't know her, but I don't like her. But if it comes down to a woman being president of the United States, Kamala Harris can't. Clinton is a fucking bitch cunt. I think she would have more of a uh, more plausible time dealing with the heads of states that don't like dealing with women, like the men in the Middle East. So I think you don't don't have a, a rat bitch who's uh, able to get the shit done. So I don't see a woman being president. I don't. I don't fucking want a woman. I wouldn't respect a woman president. Uh, I'm tired of these women who are putting. putting you're you're sexist. You're oh, sexist. One hundred percent. So there's misogynist. Uh, I, I am a one hundred percent sexist. I am a, um, chauvinist and sexist. I am not misogynist. I don't hate women. I just do not think they belong in certain roles at all. And president is damn well one of them. Yeah, uh, I mean, we've had this discussion with the military, too, and law enforcement here. There's, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, uh, you know, there, even uh, you saw a Secret Service in Butler here, the, the uh, rally that was there. The secret, the, these women looked inept. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with having that discussion, saying, you know, in certain areas, in certain occupations, in certain fields, uh, just the biology of the differences between men and women, you would prefer a six foot two, 240 pound man in a spec ops group, uh, like the Navy SEALs or Marine recons versus a five foot five, 130 pound girl, no matter how strong or how capable she may be, um, given the two options with the same service record, service background, 
wouldn't you want the more physically uh, stronger, capable? I, I don't um, even go that route. I think so. I don't go. I go with the fucking hormone route too, as well too. If I overdose on testosterone and my estrogen levels kick in, I'm gonna be a little fucking bitch. I'm gonna have that emotional kind of. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't want a woman who is gonna run into some combat. Fuck. I don't care how much she did her. Oh, I'm a, a true patriot, blonde Barbie shit, and she puts up on her Instagram and her Daisy Dukes and a fake titted bikini top, and I've got my guns. Awesome. When the shit flies and and you've done your range days and you think it's fun and you think it's cute, can you fucking stand next to me as I'm plunging a fucking K-bar into somebody's face and throat over and over and over again until they're done? I do have I don't think women have that capability at all. Even these and I've I've talked about these mama bears. This is one of the biggest reasons why I believe that this whole conservative movement's a bunch of fucking shitheads. They've been coming after your kids for years with these drag queen story hour shit where's all the mama bears that went out to destroy not protest to fucking destroy any place grown men with makeups and prosthetic tits were uh, uh, dancing in front of their kids you didn't see it so i don't want a woman in military i don't want a woman fucking police sure said don't want to run on the country stay at home and cook you fucking bitch (laughs) there's also we we talked about this and this is a I think a very valid point that you brought up, Dominic, and we've touched on before in past podcasts, which is there is a, a certain a thing that happens with men and women in a working, a close, intimate work environment like that, where a man is naturally inclined to protect, to protect, and look out for the well-being and the safety of the woman in that environment, especially if they've worked together for years. Mm-hmm. The the focus. Uh, can easily become in a violent situation instead of dealing with a perpetrator or, or instead of dealing with the enemy, the back of their mind or even in the forefront of their mind saying, I have to look out for her safety. I have to look out for, for her well-being. I have to, which can compromise a mission or duty in some no. certain situations. No. Muammar Gaddafi had female bodyguards um, and he never got assassinated, of, of course, until the Americans and the CIA came in, but that's a different story. But uh, Gaddafi had uh, female bodyguards, and they were pretty good, apparently. Uh, yeah, look, I, I, I don't want, I don't want to crap on uh, a woman's ability to serve. I agree. But I agree. Oh, there no, are I, the, certain- how about a woman's ability to stir shit up? Uh, I, I want to write off your point with law with law enforcement. How many cops, male cops? Are, are fucking their female coworker, or they're trying to fuck their female coworker, and she does something stupid on a call, like pull somebody over for something, and she, I smell weed in the car. And he's like, no, I, I don't smell fucking weed. But then she goes and pulls him out of the car, violates his right, and he goes all along with it because he fucked her and he doesn't want her to tell, no, I can't, don't tell my wife, or doesn't want command staff to know. Mm-hmm. They're a liability. They're a fucking liability, and it's not just about what we want to do for them to protect them, but it's how much. Where do they fucking pull our strings that are tied around our balls because of what they do? Yeah, or you know, we can have gays in the military. I think that's just as bad. Trannies too. Yeah, yeah. trannies in the military. No, it's all valid points. All valid points here, uh, and I'm sure that's pretty commonplace. I've ne- I've never served in law enforcement, but I'm sure. I mean, we saw recently in Tennessee. I think it was where that. Uh, female officer was uh, sleeping with, I believe, five or six of her coworkers. She ended up uh, winning the lawsuit. By the way, she sued and she got oh, some money out about of it. that. But uh, yeah, it's probably pretty commonplace. I would imagine, Dominic, you've probably seen it. And well, I mean, yes. uh, locally here yeah. in Pittsburgh, we have detail. We have detail officers that work at uh, the bars uh, at night where I you manage, and you know, you hear things, and there's, you know, they, it's, it happens. It happens in the military. I mean, you, you sleep with a. Uh, you know, a fellow woman Marine or even a um, Marine, a female Marine that's uh, ranked above you or, uh, you know, it just, it happens. It just, well, it is what, what it is Colonel and Nathan, it causes issues. What a Colonel Nathan Jessup said. This is nothing more attractive than a, a woman you have to salute while she's giving you a blowjob. Well, it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's so in his poor huh? case, unless it's they true. elect some damn gal president, he'll just have to go on fantasizing it. Oh, shit. I don't know. Well, what do you guys got coming up for the Burn Pit podcast on Monday? Uh, 
Every Monday, 4 o'clock, join us. 4 o'clock in the East, 1 o'clock in the West. Join us on Spreely TV. You can find Spreely on Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick. Download the Freedom Hub app right to your phone or smart device. Go to Spreely.com. Sign up for Spreely Social. Also, check out Spreely Marketplace. There's a bunch of great products on there. 100 Flowers, My Pillow, Century H2O, uh, Patriot Cigars. But uh, this last Monday, we had a whistleblower on. She was fantastic. Uh, Matt went and met her on Sunday. They talked about what she saw at the rally. Very uh, interesting stuff. You're not, we're not getting the whole story. The media is not giving us the whole story. We're releasing that uh, podcast this week. Um, and then Monday, we'll go over uh, news of the day. Matt and I, of course, will give our uh, views on things. Uh, a healthy dose of right-wing extremism. Yeah, we'll ring the bell probably a lot. I mean, you know, you right. know how it is. We'll talk about uh, pictures of shoes, and then we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll delve into all the topics. We'll touch on things that uh, nobody else except for maybe the Rants of Izzo show will we touch need, on. We need and more protests. that's what we do. We need more protests for you guys. We do. We need, we need protesters yeah. outside with signs saying fucking six million shoes. That's what you need. Uh, I, you guys bring the we asshole. We need more militia uh, units, Dominic. Uh, more militias. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Guys, that's your Wednesday show. Rants of Izzo here on Spreely.com. If you want to connect with the Burn Pit Podcast, guys, you go watch their show. And you go watch it on Spreely.com. You can go check it out on their past shows, their current shows, whatever they're going to release on Monday, which is going to be great. Check them out on social media, The Berm Pit Podcast. Do that search there. Scott Sieverts, Matty Wack, and uh, start a militia and keep fucking women in the kitchen and out of politics. That's how it should be. Um, damn, this, this flew by. Kamala Harris, we'll see what happens. I guess Biden is supposed to speak today from his desk about... Uh, his uh, his decision to drop out or his forced decision that they made him do. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be a very interesting time between now and November 5th. And uh, I'm going to enjoy every fucking Wednesday with you guys uh, between now and then. Because everybody out there is a faggot fucking cuck, cunt, retard. Guys, have a great damn day. Go out and help somebody today. If you can't help them, don't hurt them. We'll see you tomorrow.